Before proceeding further in this course, I want to give you a brief overview of how the web actually works. Now in this course, our main goal is to learn how to develop backend applications with Node.js. And therefore, it's probably a good idea to get a basic understanding of how the backend application or the web application which uses backend actually works behind the scenes. If you have at least the basic knowledge of how the web actually works, then learning the concepts of Node.js which we use for creating backend application, that will become easier for you. So let's get started. Here we have a client and we have a server. And on this server, we are hosting three applications, the Node application, the Java application and the .NET application. All the three applications are hosted on the same server with this IP address but on different port numbers. So this node app is hosted at this port number 8000, Java app is hosted at port number 4000 and this .NET app is hosted at port number 3000. Now let's say from the browser we want to access this node application. So here in this example this browser is the client but a client can also be an iOS app, an Android app or even a desktop app. In our case, the client is a browser. Now, to access this Node app application from our browser, we need to type the URL of that application. So let's say this www.noteapp.com, this is the domain name which is associated with this Node app application. So we need to type that domain name in this address bar. And here, from this application, we want to access the home page. So after typing the domain name, we have used this slash and after that we are specifying the resource which we want to access. Now here, when I press enter, the client is going to send a request to the server where the application is hosted. And then the server will then send back the response which is going to contain the web page that we have just requested for. So here we requested for the home page from this node app application and the server is going to send us the HTML of that home page, that resource. So from the client, we send a request to the server and then the server responded with the data which we requested for. And this process is called as the request response model or the client server architecture. And most of the things about the backend development revolves around this fundamental concept. Now, this looks a very simple process of sending a request to the server and then receiving the response. But actually, it's not as simple as it looks. First of all, the question is, when we type this domain name, how does the client know to which server it has to send the request and to which port number it has to access the application? Let's try to answer this question. The first thing which you need to understand here is that the domain name which we type in the address bar, for example, google.com, facebook.com or in our example, this nodeapp.com, this is not the real address of the server that we are trying to access. It's just a nice name that is easy for us to remember. In reality, the server does not have a name. It has an IP address. For example, our node app is hosted on this server with this IP address 192.168.20.134. So when we type a domain name in the URL, we need a way of kind of converting this domain name to the real address of the server, to the IP address of the server where the application is hosted. And that happens through a DNS. Now keep in mind that we have typed the URL and we have pressed enter. But the request has not been sent yet here. Before sending the request, we need to resolve this domain name with the actual server address. So the first thing that happens when we type the URL, the domain name in the address bar and when we press enter, that the browser makes a request to the DNS. DNS stands for domain name server. And these are special servers that are basically like the phone books of the internet. The DNS server is basically responsible for matching the domain name with the actual IP address of the server. So this DNS here, it simply matches the web address that we typed into the browser to the server's real IP address. In our example, it matched the nodeapp.com with the IP address of the server. And also, every application is hosted on some port number. So after the domain name, we have a colon. And then we also have the port number where the application is actually hosted. So what you need to remember here is that the domain name is not the real address of the web application. And you also need to remember that DNS will convert the domain name to its real IP address. And then it will send back this real IP address to the browser. Once we have the real web address, a TCP socket connection is established between the browser and the server. 
So now the client and server are connected and this connection will be kept alive for the entire time it takes to send the request and receive the response with all the files of the website. TCP stands for Transmission Control Protocol and IP stands for Internet Protocol and together they are the communication protocol that defines exactly how the data transfers across the web. They are basically the Internet's fundamental control system because again they are the one who set the rules about how the data moves on the Internet. Alright, so in the first step the domain name is resolved and in the second step the TCP IP connection has been made between the client and the server. And now it's finally time to make a request and the request that we make is an HTTP request. So here we are sending an HTTP request to the server. HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. So just like TCP IP, HTTP is also another transfer protocol. And by the way, a communication protocol is simply a set of rules that allows two or more parties to communicate with each other. And in case of HTTP, HTTP is just a protocol that allows clients and web servers to communicate by sending requests from the client to the server and receiving responses from the server to the client. Now when we send an HTTP request to the server, HTTP request contains some information which the server needs in order to process the request. And let me show you a little example of how the request will look like. Here we are sending a GET request to the server. So this is a method or you can say request type. So basically we can send different type of requests. For example, GET request to fetch some data from the server, POST request to create a new data on the server, PUT request to update an existing record in the server and DELETE request to delete a record on the server. Now there are also other methods which we will discuss later in this course but these are the four main methods, the four main request types. Then this request also has the information of which resource we are trying to access. In our example we are trying to access the home page. So here you can see the resource is home. And here we also have the HTTP version which it is using for communication. And this first line here is called a start line. So we can say that a start line of a request consists of the HTTP method that the request is using, the request target, in our example it is slash home and the HTTP version. Now a request also has some request headers. Request header is just some information that we send about the request itself. And there are tons of different headers available like what browser is used to make the request, at what time the request was made, user's browser language and many more information is passed with the request header. And finally, depending on the type of request we are sending, we also might need to send the body with that request. For example, here we are sending a GET request. So basically, we want to fetch some data from the server. In that case, we don't have to send any body. But let's say we are sending a POST request. And as I mentioned earlier, we use POST request to create a new record on the server. So let's say we want to create a new user in the database. For that, we need to send a POST request. And with that POST request, we also need to send the information about the user, the data which we want to create in the database. So in that case, this body will also have some content. But here since we are sending a GET request, I have set this body as NULL. Because with the GET request, we don't want to send any body. Now keep in mind, as a developer, we don't have control on how the request will look like. It's not us developers who write these requests. But still, it's extremely important that you understand what an HTTP request and also a response looks like because you will be working with them a lot. Now here, we are sending an HTTP request. But I also want to mention that we also have something called as HTTPS. And the main difference between HTTP and HTTPS is that HTTPS is encrypted using TLS or SSL which are yet some more protocols, but we are not going to go deep into that. All right, so our request now hits the server, which will be working on it until it has our web page ready to be sent back. Once the web page is ready to send, the server will send it with the HTTP response. And just like HTTP request, HTTP response also contains some information related to that response. For example, an HTTP response will look something like this. The HTTP response will contain information like whether the request was successful or not. If the request was successful, it will send back a status code with the response. So the status code for success is 200. Okay, so that status code will be sent with the response. If the status code is 404, in that case, the resource which we requested for that was not available on the server. And there are many more status code like that. 
then we have the response header and again the response header contains information about the response which the server is sending back and with the response we can also send our own headers we can create custom headers and we can send those headers with the response and since we made a get request with the response we are going to receive some data so the response will also contain that data here we requested for this home page so with the response we are going to receive the html of that home page now keep in mind as a backend developer we don't have control over how the http request will look like but we do have control on how the http response will look like because it's us backend developers who specifies what data we want to send with the response what status code we want to send with the response what headers we want to send with the response and so on so this is a very high level overview of how the request response or the client server architecture actually works now in this example we only sent one request to this home page and in the response we got the html of that home page now in that html file we might be using other resources like css file some javascript files images etc so when we send a request to the home page and when we receive the html of that home page that html will be scanned for all the assets that it needs to build the entire website like the javascript files css files images or other assets and for each of these different files the browser will then make a new http request to the server so we made one request to access the home page but that home page is using other resources so the browser will make multiple requests to download those resources which it needs to use when rendering the html and don't worry if this does not make any sense because i will show you this practically in the next lecture now let's quickly talk about tcp ip and figure out how this request and response data is actually sent across the web so we learned before that tcp and ip are the communication protocols that define how data travels across the web now i'm not going to go into complete details here but here is what you need to know first the job of tcp is to break up the request and responses into thousands of small chunks called packets before they are sent then once they get to their destination it will reassemble all the packets into the original request or response so that message arrives at the destination as quickly as possible now this would not be possible if we send the website simply as one big chunk then the job of the ip protocol is to actually send and route all these packets through the internet so it ensures that all the packet arrives at the right destination by using the ip address on each of these packets again this is just a very broad overview of what actually happens behind the scenes of web so this is all from this lecture i hope you found this information very helpful and interesting in the next lecture we will do some http requests to the web so that you become more familiar with the protocol this is all from this lecture thank you for listening and have a great day